Hello and welcome to my lessons on a modern version of Gothic Batard. These lessons are based on a style I developed um, based on what I learned from my teacher Mr. Jeff Ford. Gothic Batard historically is written with a bit of a slant. Uh, what we are going to be learning is written upright. If you've taken any classes with me, you know I like to teach in uh, groups of letters to establish the patterns um, that are present um, in the in the alphabet and it makes the learning uh, a bit easier and understanding the structure is, is a bit simpler. So we're going to be starting with the group one um, based on the this letter O uh, which is kind of the shape that's repeated in, in all of the letters. The letter O is made of two strokes called the bullhorns. We're going to start with looking at that and based on um, um, on this stroke, we will see how the other letters are built. Um, before we start, I would like to um, mention a couple of things about um, broad edge calligraphy. When you're <clears throat> writing with broad edge scripts, your uh, pen angle um, or so, sorry the nib angle um, is important different scripts have different nib angles for gothic batard we're going to be using 45 degrees to the horizontal so what that means is that if you place your uh, nib on the paper and pick it up you should have a 45 degrees angle with the horizontal that is important because it it determines the shape of your strokes and where the thicks and thins occur. The other thing is the pen angle, which, which means the angle of this shaft of the pen. Um, for broad edge scripts, it's fairly upright. So what you do is you rest your pen a little bit in front of this base knuckle of your forefinger and the <clears throat> tip of your um, pen should be pointing a bit to the right of your right shoulder if you're right-handed. <clears throat> so as I mentioned the letter O is made of two bull horns. Now I'm writing at a fairly large scale just for demonstration so we'll ignore these guidelines for now. I'll come to the guidelines in a bit. So a bull horn is simply a stroke drawn in a curve. So the movement of my pen is simply this curved stroke. Uh, the thicks and thins simply happen because of the width of the nib going through this arc. This, there is a bit of a structure to this. Um, if we place our starting the topmost point and the bottommost point along a vertical, we get a very well balanced bullhorn. Now, in a previous lesson, which I have now taken down, um, I actually uh, forgot to mention that to make a letter from this, this well-balanced bullhorn will result in a letter that's actually tilted um, because both of these bullhorns independently are balanced, but the overall balance of the letter is kind of tilted. What that uh, means is that the top of the letter is far uh, to um, right to the right of the letter. So in order to compensate for that, we actually bring the bullhorn out of balance a little bit. But when we add the second bullhorn, um, it results in a much better balanced letter. Now these are not ideally shaped, but you get the idea. So if I am successful in drawing both the bull horns properly, it should be well balanced and actually look quite acceptable, you know, in, in both orientations, if, even if I turn it upside down. Now, <clears throat> this um, Work, the, these guidelines are, um, as the header mentions, in a 3-4-3 three, three proportion. Uh, the proportions for broad edge scripts in Western style of writing are measured in nib widths. So if I draw a short line like this, this is one nib width tall, and if I 
stagger a few of them, kind of making a staircase, um, we see that the, the, the distance between these two green lines is four nib widths. The, this is the space um, where we will be writing the body of the letter. So the line that we write on is called a baseline. The line at the top of the body of the letter is called a waistline. And the distance between the two is called x height, literally the height of the letter x. Now we have an ascend, some letters have ascenders and descenders. So the ascender space is three nib width, widths tall, as is the descender space. Now, once again, I should mention that historically Gothic Batard is a very compressed script and the body is usually about three nib widths tall, but that's kind of tight and, uh, you know, we can always try different proportions and towards the end of these lessons, we will actually do some exercises with more condensed uh, both X height and spacing. But for uh, the initial phases, I would recommend this kind of generous spacing and X height. So to make these, uh, this letter O, the draw this letter O within this X height, we know that the top of this first bullhorn um, is actually a little bit, has to be a little bit below the waistline to give us room to place the, the pen for the second stroke. So what we will do is we will place our pen a little bit below the waistline and draw our first bullhorn. This gives us room to add our second bullhorn. Now, I misjudged the angle a little bit and again my letter is a little bit slanted. I wanted a bit more upright, so I will try again. This is much better. Now, one of my favorite ways to recommend practicing and I indeed use it myself um, on a regular basis is practicing in groups of five. What that means is that you will draw five letters and then you will look for the good ones. This is bad, this is good, this is kind of questionable, uh, this is also kind of these two are okay. So what I'll do now is I'll pick the best one. This is what I the one I like best and I will try to either replicate it or if it still has some issues, I will try to I improve upon it for another group of five. So what this does, it keeps you engaged in the process of learning and you end up um, getting a better understanding much quicker. It is rare that you would go further than a, than a page to get a hang of. Um, a particular letter. You know you're done when you can get uh, three or four out of a group of five correct on a consistent basis. That's basically what you have achieved. So the letter O is two bullhorns starting a little bit below the X height. What we are aiming for is for the top and bottom points of this letter to be not exactly but fairly um, close to being on uh, the same vertical and it will produce a balanced letter. Once we have the letter O, we can form other letters that are made of it. So the letter E is the bullhorn exactly the same. With the tip of my pen, I will create an exit hairline as if I'm forming the the line, the outside um, um, of the, the second stroke. Um, but we don't actually draw that. We go and we start drawing the second line, but we stop about a nib width in and just come in at the diagonal, which gives us the letter E. So that diagonal, as we know, is all uh, along our um, thin stroke and this should be at a 45 degree angle. So again, we will practice E as a group of five, pick up our best one, try to improve or replicate it. Another letter 
in this group is the letter C. For C, we will actually flatten this top part a bit. So if you notice, it's not quite coming down as if it was in an O, it's coming out a little bit. So that's what we need. And then with the edge of our pen, we add a little bit of decoration. So we still do the exit stroke. We just flatten the top a little bit and then add a bit of this hanging decoration. That's the letter C. The D is pretty much an O. If you imagine this O extending up to here, uh, that will give us a D. But, you know, we draw it starting. So remember, this is the O stroke. I'm just starting it way over here. So I'll come straight down and then introduce the curve. Now this I kind of messed up over here, um, but we can, but you get the idea. So we'll do five of these. Now I should also mention to always hit your waist and base lines um, by going just ever so slightly over it. For straight strokes, this is more important than for rounded strokes, but you do uh, definitely want to include this little bit of thickness um, in your stroke. So, okay, I messed up the first one, but maybe I got a nice couple. Uh, this is kind of questionable. Okay, so this is pretty good performance, I think. The letter X is a variation in this on this second bullhorn in that it is a very long and rather flat bullhorn followed by a C. Like literally we write the C with a full overlap. And I like to do crossbar in the middle this is how you write the capital X I like doing it in the in the in minuscule as well but again it's, it's, it's a choice you don't have to um, follow it the thing to note is that this middle part should not be more than one nib width thick or thicker than the thick part of the C meaning the strokes should completely overlap. Here I have actually gone a little bit too far and then this middle part becomes a bit thicker than we would like it to be. So that's something to watch out for. The letter S looks a little complicated but it really is pretty straightforward. We draw one tiny bullhorn, we slide up we draw another bullhorn in the opposite direction, we slide down and we complete this bullhorn. The thing to note for this is this inside shape. I'll talk about it in a minute. From here, you just come straight down and then with the edge of your nib, you draw this kind of flare. Um, this inside shape is kind of a shield look. And this is a pattern that's repeated. If, if we look at the spaces, the counter space, the inside space enclosed in letters called a counter space. So we can see that this shield space um, is kind of present in different orientations. Um, and it this makes it very uh, similar to the this part of the O, which gives it the family resemblance. So in you know Gothic hands you can do many different types of S's. It's one of the letters that lends itself to a lot of creativity. But in this case we chose this variation for its closer resemblance to the rest of the strokes. So I'm now just quickly doing a group of five, missing the baseline here. So noting that, so it's not just after I have written five that I will look at my mistakes and analyze. I can do that while I'm doing it. And I've got, uh, uh, well, these two are good. This is also 
kind of good so i'll give it a little tick mark this is questionable this is also kind of good so you know pretty good i think so if i can do this consistently three or four times i know i'm done with the s a variation on the d i use that quite a lot is creating this curved um, kind of D. It, it looks nice, depends on what kind of space you fill. For example, if you have a following letter that's upright, you might want to use this other D. But if there's a lot of space or in, in your line of writing, um, you want to, you have a bunch of ascenders here and nothing over here, you might want to create this kind of space so it, it's better balanced. A variation of this D is to actually start from here and give it kind of an extreme shape and then go in and do a little bit of pen manipulation and produce this. So those kinds of variations add a bit of interest. I still have the counter shape similar to the rest of the letters, so the family resemblance remains. Same thing with an E. Sometimes when an E falls at the end of um, your um, uh, sentence or um, ha and has a bit of room, uh, you might want to extend it and do something playful with it. Usually, you can round it off and you know play with the. It is still the the shape overall shape remains the same, so the family resemblance remains. So I will upload um, in uh, an associated video the the worksheet how this is laid out, how to use this, um, and this was your first group of letters. So practice these. The worksheet has. A bunch of grayed out strokes and the letters for you to practice on so you get to practice literally right um, um, on top of the grayed out letters and then practice it yourself a few times and it gives you um, you know a, a, an idea of how, how the strokes are laid out what the proportions are uh, it doesn't take long to get it and you can get these plain sheets in addition to the ones the the workbook that has the printed information on it and hopefully you'll be writing gothic but art in no time so please do subscribe if you want to continue getting notification about the lessons i'll uh, roughly about a week to 10 days i will be uploading um, uh, new lessons so hopefully you will be um, sticking around for those thank you very much for uh, watching hope to see your work uh, online bye bye